Live from Butler High School, it's OHSAA Boys Basketball here on ICRC. I'm Ethan Herzog, joined by my broadcast partner, Adam Gehring. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a game of epic proportions with a lot of the line for both teams. Roger Bacon looking for their first regional since 2017, and Woodward looking to return as well. Adam, how are you feeling tonight? Are you confident in, I guess, Roger Bacon first, but also Woodrow's, Woodrow, excuse me, Woodward's chances? Uh, yeah, I think they're going to put on a great game. They got a lot of great star power over here, and I think that they can definitely give us one heck of a show. Now, Woodward has someone by the name of Paul McMillan, who has countless offers from schools, limited, including but not limited to the University of Dayton, Kansas State, Ole Miss, Penn State, Purdue, and as well as Xavier, UK, Ohio State, Louisville, and the University of Cincinnati. He's a three-star recruit and the second highest recruit in the, in the state, excuse me, under only a player, I forgot his name, from St. Vincent St. Mary, which ironically 20 years ago had the highest ranking player in the state with LeBron James. And one of the highest ranked players of all time in LeBron James. And we've seen what he's done. And speaking of 20 years ago, Roger Bacon looking for their first state championship in 20 years. Yes, sorry. You took the words right out of my mouth. It has been 20 years since a state championship run that they have won. However, they did make it back in 2017, but the, where they lost and were named the state runner-up. Now, statistically speaking, Roger Bacon since 2017 is two and one against Woodward, which lead, may lead some people to believe that maybe they have a shot to take control of this game early and lead on. But Woodward also has McMill in the fourth, like I have said before, who averages 27 points per game and has just over 2,300 points scored in his entire career. He is a transfer from Hughes High School and also went to a prep school in Arizona where he picked up a couple more offers from schools out west and came back for his senior year to play for Woodward and has yet to commit to any, any university where my theory is that he is waiting until the end of this end of this basketball season, I mean, obviously. Or possibly where, signing day. Yes. Yeah. Spring signing is a more definitive answer, but he could also announce, depending on where they fall in the, the playoffs here tonight, if they win, he may hold off. But if he were to lose tonight, he may announce in the near future, who knows? No one knows because players announcing their commitments is always something that no one really knows that when it will happen. So just moments away here from the from tip off here at Butler High School, eight minutes on the game clock. No shot clock for high school basketball. It's Roger Bacon versus Woodward here once again at Butler High School. If Roger Bacon wants a shot here, they will have to stop McMillan just as they managed to do 20 years ago in their state title run. McMillan's accomplishments are longer than the drive it took to get to this gym, <laughs> but if they can stop him, they could have a chance in this game. It was unfortunate we had to drive all the way from Cincinnati to beat the talent, but I was happy to do it, and I'm sure Adam was as well, as we are ready for the tip here in Butler High School. Tip is up, and for possession belongs to Woodward, and McMillan right off the bat goes up and misses the easy layup. The defensive rebound belongs to Atrial Clark of Roger Bacon, and now Brenner with the ball pass to Blanks, and there it's a whistle blown. That will be the first turnover of the game. Ball goes right back to Woodward. And down comes in right to McMillan. Possibly looking to re get a redo on that initial layup. Definitely wants some redemption after that humiliating mistake that was made earlier. In the corner now, the top of the key, and the ball will fly out of bounds. Turnover 
Ball will, will now belong to the Spartans. A quick, scoreless 30 seconds. That's two costly errors in a row for the Bulldogs. Roger Bacon defense will have to keep playing like that in order to have a chance in this game. Ball gets in, Roger Blanks will make his way across the timeline. Calling some audibles, getting the Roger Bacon offense set. Ball will be knocked out of bounds, but will stay with Roger Bacon. Goyette will head to the line to inbound it. He will. Clark with the ball driving inside the paint. Goes up for the layup. It's no good. Offensive rebound by Andrew Neal. The ball will sail out of bounds. Still stay with Roger Bacon. Aggressive defense so far from Woodward. It's Neal on the baseline to inbound it. Sends it in. Trapped in the far side corner for the moment. Tries to get a pass across. To be knocked out of bounds once again and will stay with Roger Bacon. And that was McMillan there with the knock out of bounds. If his defense is as good as his offense has been, he will be a real problem for the Spartans tonight. Clark under the basket, goes up for two, rattles around, no good, offensive rebound, right back to Clark. Trapped for the moment, is able to escape, gets back out across the three-point mark, and then Brenner off the back of the rim, no good. Goyette, offensive rebound, flips the defender. He'll be on the baseline. The defender tried to go up for the block. They got flipped over off of Goyette, and now Neal with the inbound. Goyette at the top of the key, pass over to Rajir Blanks. Still scoreless with 6.40 remaining in the first quarter. Blanks backs off, still outside the three-point mark, goes inside, trying to get inside the paint. Pass intended for Brenner, stolen. Making haste to get under the basket. McMillan goes up and Woodward will strike first. Makes it a two point game. Woodward up two to the Spartans, nothing. Inbound on the baseline as Rajir Blanks receives the ball. Sends the rest of his teammates across the timeline trying to bait out the full court pressure. Brenner for three, off the rim, no good. Offensive rebound from the Spartans. Now Clark goes up for two, no good. Rebounded by Moreland of the Bulldogs. Now McMillan driving inside the paint, goes up, passes it out to the top of the key, heads back. Now back inside the paint once again, it's stolen. Blanks making his way across the timeline. Goes inside, loses the ball, and it'll be out of bounds and will belong to Woodward. They've been tipped by one of the Spartans as it flew out of bounds. Possession will stay with Woodward now. Kanye Moreland with the ball. Across the timeline, defended by Blanks. Slowly letting his offense get set up. Pass goes inside the paint, trying to make something happen. It's Bostic. Passes outside, now drives inside the paint once again. Hook shot, no good, off the rim. Second attempt is good. First points for Fry on the night. Now Neal with the ball, full court, full court pressure once again for the Bulldogs. It's gonna prove to be a little dangerous here for Roger Bacon. As the ball is intercepted by Mills, goes up for the assist, and Fry's got the dunk. There's a timeout called by Roger Bacon. There's that left. Here's the first play, drives inside the paint. It's good for two, that was the first. Started the scoring off for Woodward. That was that second effort attempt there. And then the dunk off, off of the interception here. Gets off the assist and slam. Slow start for the Roger Bacon offense here. Still scoreless, 451 on the clock in the first period. Woodward leads by six. Low fouling game so far tonight. Only one foul that belongs to Woodward. Belongs to Rue Mills. 
No fouls for Roger Bacon as of current. Goyette on the baseline, gets it into Blanks. Trying to navigate the full court pressure here. It is a scary tool that is used as they go up for another layup. It is Moreland again. His first points of the game sits with two. That pass overshot. Moreland again off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Neal. Now Clark evades one defender, goes up. Goyette trying to get Roger Bacon's first points of the day on the board, but unsuccessfully. He will visit the line. That first attempt just a little bit too powerful. And Goyette fighting against the defender, draws a foul. And he will shoot two from the line. First is up and no good off the back glass. So it's coming in for Roger Bacon. Jake Cheetah enters the game and Jesse Eubanks enters the game as well. Goyette also fighting against this Woodward student section. The shot, it is good. Roger Bacon is on the board now with a seven point deficit. McMillan stands just beyond half court. Letting the offense get set up. Passing it around, goes to Bostic. Now, in the hands of Moreland. Loses the ball, but is able to recover. Moreland covered by Blanks. Let's pass over to McMillan, who's guarded by Brenner. Excuse me, it's Jake Cheetah he's being guarded by. As Moreland had an open three. Now McMillan from the penalty stripe finds two more. Woodward leads 10 to one. Roger Bacon still looking for something on offense, pass across the court to Blanks, drives inside the paint, goes up for two, short, rebounded by Fry of Woodward. Now McMillan, pass to the corner for three, off the back of the rim, no good. Defensive rebound by Roger Bacon. Blanks with the ball, gets it to Eubanks. Eubanks goes up for the layup and no good. Offensive rebound by Brenner. Goyette goes up, no good. Defensive rebound now for Bostic, who sends it over to Moreland. Great start offensively for the Bulldogs as they start to take their time a little bit. 244 and counting remaining on the clock in the first quarter. Looking for the three, Bostic driving inside, passes it back out to the near side corner. Trying to find some sort of open shooting lane, finds one for three. Off the front iron, no good. Ball's blocked. There's also a foul on Roger Bacon. That'll be their first foul of the game. Definitely a slower pace than Woodward was playing earlier in the game. They're taking their time now, letting the clock run out and taking advantage of that 10-1 lead that they have. Not Third. trying to speed things up or make bad plays. First foul belongs to Ty Brenner. As Mills visits the line, shooting two. First shot is up. Off the back iron, no good. Defensive start for Woodward as well is looking pretty good. Only held Roger Bacon to one point with just, just about two minutes remaining in this first quarter of play. The second shot is up and good. Makes it a 10 point deficit for Roger Bacon. Clark sends in the inbound to Blanks. Still battling the full court pressure. Gets it over to Neal at center court, loses the ball. Lands in the hands of McMillan. Now hanging the other way. Open three, decides not to go for it. Tries to go inside the paint. Pass back out for three. Off the rim, no good. Ball rolling around. Gets picked up by Roger Bacon. Jesse Eubanks, be specific. Blanks crosses the timeline. Trying to drive inside. Spin move, goes up for the layup, and it is good. First bucket of the game belongs to Rajir Blanks off of a layup. Looks like it could have been a foul there, but 
It is what it is. Now we're, we're back on offense. Slowing the pace. McMillan at the top of the key. Moving to his right, goes inside, looks for an easy two. Off the rim, no good. Picked up again, second effort is in and out, and then back in for the layup and two more points. As Woodward calls their first timeout of the game. Great second effort there from Woodward. Mills, to be specific, got up there, fought through the surrounding Spartans and was able to get another layup, keeping the 10-point deficit here against Roger Bacon. Now the winner of this game will play Alter at 11 p.m. on 11 a.m. Excuse me, on Saturday, right back here at Butler High School, just a little bit north of Dayton, where the state finals will be played at the University of Dayton Arena. Very exciting times. The basketball world is finally March. March Madness is almost upon us, and the basketball gods have decided that it is time to make things a little crazy. So let's see what happens tonight as Roger Bacon faces Woodward. Team down heads to Neal. It's about a minute left on the clock. Blanks, pass to Eubanks. Ball will roll out of bounds. It'll be a turnover once again. And that is the kind of careless mistakes that Roger Bacon cannot afford to make here, especially when they are down 10 points and are in need of a basket. Lots of turnovers for Roger Bacon compared to Woodward tonight already, and it's just been seven minutes of play. Ball is inbounded in the hands of Hughes. Playing the play develop, gets it to McMillan. Trying to drive inside, ball is knocked out of his hands. It's a jump ball. Possession will stay with Woodward. Very physical game here. The refs are definitely letting them play. Goyette inbounds it. Goes to Cheetah. Now to Neal, back to Goyette. Stuck for the moment, still fighting the full court pressure. He's able to get around it for the moment. Pass back. Intended for Neal, but he'll fly out of bounds and will stay with Roger Bacon. It's tipped out by a Woodward defender, which results in the Spartans keeping possession. Neal on the baseline, looking to send it in. Does short pass to Brenner. Brenner stuck for the moment, trying to find an open shot. Gets it to Goyette inside the paint. Pass back out to Brenner. Now back to Goyette. Voice one defender goes up for two, and he's got two. His first basket of the game. Now has three points of the game after going one for two on free throws earlier in the quarter. 12 seconds left for Woodward. Up 13 to five against Roger Bacon. Laying the clock wind down, they'll have the last shot of the quarter, and it is up and no good. And the, the clock will just run out. There will be no time left for Roger Bacon to try and cut down at that lead. At the end of the first, Woodward on top 13 to Roger Bacon's five. We'll be back after this. The next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how are we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is the Uniform Crew from Little Long Park. We just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, you can always go to the ICRCTV.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you.
Spartans down after one. Woodburn leads 13 to five with eight minutes left in the first half. I'm Ethan Herzog joined by my broadcast partner, Adam Gehring, and you're watching ICRC. Thank you for spending time with us. So far, this game hasn't been exactly what we've expected. Pat Mc or Paul McMillan has been using the pieces around him to get an eight point lead on Roger Bacon. That three point shot, no good off of the, off of the rim, excuse me. Fumbling over my words a little bit. Roger Blanks, receives the pass manager, Neo crosses the timeline, takes a step back. Trying to let some offensive play develop. Brenner looks for a three, decides not to go for it. Struggling for a moment, gets it over to Clark. That pass intended for Goyette will fly past him into the hands of Fry. And it will be another foul called on the court. Woodrow will, Woodrow will have it under the Spartans' basket on the baseline. So it may have been a reaching foul on Andrew Neal. Fortunate call there for him and the Spartans. His first foul, team second of the half. The Spartans look to cut down on this lead. Woodrow back on offense. McMillan, top of the key. Dribbles around, looking for an option. Finds an open three from the corner. Off the, doesn't even hit the rim. Be an air ball, ball will fly out of bounds but will stay with Woodward. Ball sent back in. Trying to find some kind of way to extend this lead. But it'll be stolen, Goyette, the culprit. As Blanks backs into a corner, it's intercepted by Mills. Goes up, second attempt, no good. Third attempt, trying, and it'll be a jump ball. Roger Bacon will have possession. 6.53 remaining in this first, first half of play as the Bulldogs lead over the Spartans, 13 to five. Goyette inbounds it, sends it to Brenner. As Bostick's gonna come flying in, trying to get the quick turnover and score, but will be unsuccessful. Both teams have pre played pretty sloppily during this quarter, except for what we just saw there. McMillan goes up for the layup. That's two more 10 point lead for Woodward. Roger Bacon seemingly a little shaken up here. Goes inside the paint and Brenner finds two. Puts it down. Two and eight point lead now for Rod, for Woodward, excuse me. McMillan heads to the basket, but will be fouled, sent to the line, shooting two. Last two baskets here. McMillan's layup bouncing around, finds its way in, and then Neal gets it started. Brenner finishes it off, goes up for the layup, finds two. Hopefully that can help Roger Bacon get back into this game. It's McMillan, visits the line, first shot is up and good. He has one more from the charity strike. Again, a low fouling game so far. Spartans with three, Woodward with two. Doesn't say much about how physical it's been. This has been a rough game between these two teams. Second free throw, no good. For McMillan, but is able to back Blanks into a corner as Neal has to come back and rescue him. Gets back to a corner himself, finds Goyette. And is, has the ball almost stolen. He's able to recover, gets to the Brenner, gets to the Neal. Ball almost stolen again, it's gonna roll out of bounds. Now it'll be safe. And Fry's gonna go up for a layup. What a sequence for the Bulldogs. Finding ways to extend the lead. And it turns out it went out of bounds. It'll be Roger Bacon's ball. Still a great effort there. I, I, I will give them credit. Yeah, interesting sequence. The drive and the passion is there for Woodward. Both of these teams know what's on the line. They know what it means to win this game. Blanks working against Mills. Whistle is blown. 
Ball will stay with Roger Bacon now for the foul. Pretty full gym here tonight. Matt Butler, both teams showing up. Roger Bacon had a spirit bus, I know that. Not sure about Woodward, both coming from about the same area of town. About an hour drive north, up past the University of Dayton here to Butler High School. Spent my fair share of time up in Dayton with Roger Bacon Athletics, traveling with the team, broadcasting the sports of Roger Bacon my senior year. Now Blanks with the ball. Doesn't find much, gets it to Brenner, trying to open up something, working against McMillan. Now Cheetah with the ball, makes a move, gets it inside the goal yet, trying to find the assist. Brenner goes up, and it's good for two. Took, an, it took advantage of another mistimed block there from a Woodward defender. The Spartans need to keep capitalizing on that if they want to stay in this game. Now the Bulldogs back on offense. Gets it to Fry. Fry for two. Off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by the Spartans. Brenner picks that one up. Blinks a little slow, crosses the timeline, gets it back to Brenner. Trapped in the corner, gets it to Eubanks now. Driving inside the paint, fast to Cheetah. Trying to go up. Surrounded. Goes up anyway. Ball's knocked around, but ends up with the Bulldogs. And now there's a foul, and it's a turnover. What a play. What an acting job from Ty Brenner. Got the turnover for Roger Bacon, 4.32 remaining in the first half of play here from Butler. It's Roger Bacon and Woodward, the regional semifinals. Brenner with the ball waiting, gets it to Cheetah. Cheetah goes up, off the rim, no good, fighting for it. Will end up in the hands of Fry and Woodward. Now McMillan trying to make his way. Shot is blocked, second shot, no good. Offensive rebound goes up, and the third effort is good from Dante Farrell. Be his first two of the game. There's just a great effort there. Three times, McMillan unable twice. As Farrell finishes it off and gets the and one. From the charity strike, Farrell up and off the back iron and no good. Rebounded by the start. Spartans, excuse me, Blanks sends it to Cheetah. Cheetah goes up and it's good. He gets the and one. What a play from Jake Cheetah. Long pass. Finds Cheetah, draws the foul. It's, finds its way in. What an effort. Now a seven point deficit with 3.57 remaining in the first half. Spartans fighting back. Trying to claw their way from a deep deficit in the first quarter. Just slowly but surely grind it out like they did when they were in the GCL. That style of play has shaped them and it's a part of who they are now and how they play, even in the Miami Valley Conference and the postseason. Cheetah's first shot, and only shot, up and no good. Will stay, will now go to Woodward, excuse me. That was Atrial Clark and Andrew Neal enter the game for Roger Bacon. Took out Jacob Goyet, one of the top, one of the taller players on the Roger Bacon roster. Second tallest to Nick Hughes. As Woodward looks to, to continue to extend their lead, heading into halftime. Sending it around, open three, off to the iron, no good. Rebounded by Neal. He's gonna get it to Cheetah. That was a very hefty pass from Brenner to Cheetah. 
saw the opportunity, was just a little bit too strong to be a turnover. Cheetah's a great wide receiver on the football field, but it may take a better pass to get the ball to him there. Now Hughes with the ball, taking his time. Tries to get it inside, it's stolen by Roger Bacon. Cheetah passes it down to Brenner, stops for three. Off the rim, no good. Now Neal for a two, and he's got two. Makes it a five point deficit for Roger Bacon, slowly clawing their way. The offense has come alive for Roger Bacon, and so is the student section. Student section and the cheerleaders trying to get in the heads of these Woodward players. Throw them off their game. Hook shot from Bostic is good. Makes it a seven point game. Now the Woodward student section echoing the Roger Bacon student section. Returning the favor. Eubanks in the paint. And it's blocked by Fry. He said, no, -uh, none of that. Deep pass. And just nothing. He wanted none of that. Eubanks had the opportunity. He's taken away. Kind of rudely from Fry. By Fry. Excuse me. Neal on the baseline. Send it inbounds. Goyette re enters the game. They send it back to him. It's in the corner. It's tipped by a Spartan. It'll be a turnover once again. It belongs to Woodward. Ball now in the hands of Paul McMillan, the fourth. Like I said earlier, has yet to commit to any university. Has offers from Purdue, Xavier, Cincinnati. Some big names. Ole Miss as well. That three is no good. Rebound, offensive rebound. Neal tries to draw the foul. Is unsuccessful. Pass it back out to McMillan, who goes inside for two, and he's got two. That ball almost stolen on the inbound from Clark to Neal, and Neal loses it. Picked up by McMillan. He goes for three. No good. Some sloppy ball handling on both sides of the ball. Roger Bacon just unfortunate enough to be unable to recover it most of the time. That's Woodward is. They go for three and it's blocked by Cheetah. What a block there. Now McMillan taking it back to just about half court, just about a minute remaining in the first half. McMillan tries to go inside, stolen by Cheetah. Cheetah inside the paint, up for the layup, draws a foul. Woodward fans unhappy with that Definite, call. Definitely not too pleased about that one. The great steal there, took it right out of the hands of McMillan. Rushes down the court, goes up. Is able to draw the foul, unfortunately not able to get the and one, but will visit the line shooting two. They didn't appreciate that sequence. The ball being stolen from their star player and then a foul being called shortly afterward. First shot is up and good for Jake Cheetah. Some subs for Woodward. Bossick coming back in, Fry coming back out. 108 remaining in the first half. Woodward 22, Roger Bacon 14. Cheetah. Once again, off the front iron, no good. Goyette goes for the offensive rebound. He's unsuccessful and knocked it out of bounds. It'll belong to Woodward. Just about a buck five left for Woodward here in the first half. Won't be surprised if they hold it as there is no shot clock in high school basketball. McMillan goes up, off the, off the iron, no good. There's a travel call on Brazier Blanks, and that'll be a turnover once again. Woodward has it under the Roger Bacon basket. Now Woodward once again on offense. Top of the key for three. Off the rim, no good. Fighting for the rebound, second effort goes up, and it is good. Hughes, Damarian Hughes. 
with that basket. Now 38 seconds of counting remaining in the first half. Spartans down by 10. Need some momentum and they have none. Ball belongs to Woodward with 30 seconds remaining. Truly a rough first half for Roger Bacon. Not finding much to work with. Came alive late in the second, but has since had the fire die off. 20 seconds. Woodward's going to hold it here. Moreland sends it to Bostick. Just chewing the clock. They'll have the last shot of the half. Bostick once again makes a move. Makes another move. Goes up for three. In and out. And in. And that'll end the half. 27 to 14 is the score. Woodward on top by a good amount here. A rough start for Roger Bacon in a rough second quarter. Big plays made by Woodward as that three goes in. And the momentum will stay with Woodward. We'll be back in just about 10 minutes with the start of the second half. You're watching ICRC. Stay tuned. this entire bowl of nachos but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour he recognized a sign not from the gods or a bolt of lightning but from a double heart a kissy face and a fourth ha in ha 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 that's when jordan knew he was buzzed so when it was time to go he got a ride home instead of driving be a legend like jordan recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home buzz driving is drunk driving on air or online this is media for your community this is icrc tv there's no better feeling than to be a part of a fire department this is a family Police officer, it's, it's a great job, it really is. Um, you never know what you're gonna get. Um, you never know who you're gonna help. We're forgetting what's going on outside. We're focusing on what's going on in here, and we're all family. This idea of a family academy, connecting families to talk about relevant issues. Unbelievable, Milford has stormed all the way back in this football game. And it's up to every one of you all to keep this going and carry the torch. I hope you will do that. Thank you. ICRC TV. Other's mine. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes.
hear someone go, didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed. And I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. Did I donate my plasma? I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. Chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. You made your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. It's a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. It's a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girl. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really, huh? I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, one. Observe. 
a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. Hey, it's Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note of our fearless furry friend here, humans. I appreciate it. Fist bump. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Butler High School, just north of Dayton, where the Woodward Bulldogs have full control here against the Roger Bacon Spartans. I'm Ethan Herzog, joined by Adam Gearing, and you're watching ICRC, and also OHSAA Boys Basketball. A little bit of a rough first half for the Spartans. Only yeah. scored about three points in the first quarter, came alive in the second, but since has had the flame die off heading into the third. Yeah, Woodward has definitely taken the momentum back after the five point first quarter. The Spartans kind of got some momentum, but then Paul McMillan took over the game for the Bulldogs as we enter quarter three. Once again, Roger Bacon looking to revisit their first regional final since 2017. As that first bucket attempt from McMillan is no good. And Neal goes up, and his is no good. Rebounded by Moreland of Woodward. Making quick use of their time. McMillan another to basket. Pat kicks it out to Bostic. Air ball, second attempt blocked, but will be a foul. Mills will visit the line shooting two. Foul on Jacob Goyette there. Looks like he went up for the block, but ended up smacking the dome of Mills, which will make him visit the line. First shot is up, off the iron, no good. 13 point deficit here. As Roger Bacon looking to come back here in the second half. Mills, second shot up, and it is good. Lots of trends of only making one free throw each time they visit a line when they shoot two. I don't think anyone's made both this game. Spartans once again fighting the full court pressure. The Bulldogs gets around it. Neal pass to Clark wide open in the paint. He finds two. He'll have the Spartans' first points of a half. Now sitting with his first bucket of the game. Moreland sits at half court, advances to the top of the key, gets the Bostic, he's gonna try and drive it outside, right inside the paint, excuse me. Only give him my words, Moreland shot up and no good. Now Blanks, with the ball back on offense for the Spartans. A little aggressive, kicks it out to Goyette, still inside the paint, goes up for the layup off the glass, no good. And it's knocked out to Moreland, ball's knocked away. Almost, love miscommunication here, Brenner with the steal, gets to the Clark, who gets to the Blanks. Quickly back under the Woodru Woodward basket. The ball's out of bounds, still belongs to Roger Bacon. Very crazy and confusing sequence there. But we can see that Roger Bacon has put Atriel Clark back into the game rather than Jesse Eubanks. Once again, a little sloppy to start here as Blanks gets the ball. That layup is no good, way too strong. As Bostic, with the ball, goes over lay of the zone, off the glass, and is good. Spartans advancing. 
still dealing with that full court pressure is definitely hard to maneuver around as that shot is no good, but Blanks will be sent to the line shooting one. Foul on Fry, who went up. It's like he hit Blanks in the face, kind of like Goyette did a few minutes ago. Yeah, got more than just the ball. That'll send him to the charity stripe. First shot is up and good. He's shooting two. I I said one, which I'm incorrect. Now Blanks, second shot up, and it is good. There we go. I say that they're not making both shots, and then Blanks proves me wrong. Broadcaster's curse really must exist. Oh, no, it does. Trust me. Oh, yeah. I've done it way too many times for the University of Cincinnati. It's horrible. They made PAT kickers miss their PATs, and I always feel bad about it. As Fry goes up, and he doesn't feel bad about that at all. What a dunk there from Fry. Well, we're now leading 32 to 18, 539 remaining in the third quarter. You're watching ICRC here at Butler High School. Amazing facilities here. Two good-sized video boards. Well, it's a nice floor here as Clark goes up and he gets the layup. And that's the benefit of putting Clark back in the game instead of Eubanks. Clark is a force in the post because he can jump higher than pretty much anyone else on this team, which allows him to get closer to the basket and be great on defense too. McMillan hands it off to Bostic, drops back for three. Off the back iron, no good, rebounded, extending the arm is Brenner. Now Blanks goes up, almost called for a travel there. Goyette, his third attempt, it's good. What an effort there from Goyette. Makes it a 10 point deficit, 446. And counting remaining in the third quarter. Now McMillan. Gets it over to Moreland. Dancing around, trying to burn off a little bit of clock, slowing down the pace. Up by 10. Now Bostic, he's gonna back up. It's a two McMillan, who loses the ball for just a moment. He's able to recover. They're trying to find their way inside. Instead, goes for the open three. Off the rim, no good. Ball is out of bounds. Who will it belong to? Stay with Woodward. See there, it's like it may have been Clark's foot. It bounced off it and made it roll out of bounds. Very unfortunate there for the Spartans as Woodward is able to chew more time off the clock. Looks like it was either Clark or Bostic who had bounced off of probably Clark. Now Moreland with the ball, trying to advance inside the paint, kicks it out to McMillan. He's going to drive inside the paint himself, kicks it back out. Now we see it at the top of the key. Working against Brenner. Goyette charges and gets the steal, but there's a holding call. It's a turnover. Goyette's going to go over and plead his case to the ref unsuccessfully. Goyette almost had a breakaway there. Correction is not a turnover. The ball does belong to Goyette, but he is a little frustrated that he didn't have that breakaway there. Now Blanks, one-on-one -on -one with Moreland. Gets it to Brenner inside to Goyette. Trying to work that inside. Sheeta goes up, too strong off the glass. Rebounded by Eubanks. His attempt no good. Third try, no good. Rebounded by Farrell. He'll take it the other way. Now in the hands of Bostic. Down to McMillan for three. Off the rim, no good. The ball is swatted out of bounds. I believe it'll stay with Woodward. Subs coming in for Woodward as well, and Roger Bacon. Clark replacing Goyette. And Hughes will come in as well for Woodward. 
Woodward indeed has the ball. Three oh five and counting remaining in the quarter. Trying to find some open shot. Goes up, no good, rebounded by Clark. Clark, the bounce pass goes to Blanks and he can't get a hold of it and it'll be a turnover. The Spartans flustered here. Down 10 with 2.47 left in the third. Once again, a low fouling half. Spartans with one, Bulldogs with two. Rosen clean, I wouldn't say Rosen clean game, as that bucket goes up for two. But the refs are definitely letting them play as we head to a timeout. And on the tournament here, the winner plays Alter on Saturday at 11. Back here at Butler, a little history thing here. Roger Bacon has the chance to play St. Vincent St. Mary again, this time in the state semifinal as opposed to the state final. And St. Vincent St. Mary has Sincere Harris, who is the only recruit in Ohio, or the only high school player in Ohio, who is ranked above McMillan. And just like 20 years ago, St. Vincent St. Mary has the top ranked recruit in Ohio and has managed to do a lot with him. Spartans looking for some history here. As Roger Bacon head coach Brian Neal is retiring after this year, sitting at 255 wins, the winningest coach in school history. Trying to cap off his career with a bang. Roger Bacon trying to complete the pattern that they've established in the state championship. They won in 1982 and they won in 2002. So now they're trying to get that third ring in 2022. Another point to make here, the last time Spartans made district, they went all the way. Grant, they didn't win state, but they also went, still went all the way, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. It's Nielsen to the Eubanks, and he loses the ball. Picked up by Woodward. Hughes goes up, and he's got two. 16-point deficit here for the Spartans with 2.18 remaining on the clock. Hughes, Jeremiah Hughes, first points of the game. He now sits with two. McMillan leads with 11. Usually the high, highest scorer for Woodward. His highest, his, the most points he has scored in a single game was 41, 41 yes. against Warren Central in Indiana. His lowest was 19 against Shamanah Julianne. Last week, Brandon, that is this season. As Neal tries to go for a pass to Blanks, and he's not there. And he goes up for the layup, and he's denied by Cheetah, but the second effort is good. Great sequence there. Almost denied the possession there. Cheetah goes up, knocks it off the glass, but Farrell's there to recover it as Hughes. Damari Hughes, Hughes may have been injured. A little slow to get up there, heads to the sideline. He'll sit out. Going to take a breather on the bench before possibly heading back in. Goyette sends the inbound to Brenner, now back to Goyette as they still deal with the full court pressure. Committed defensively to that. Clark receives a pass, fighting his way in, loses the ball, stay with Roger Bacon, however, off the foul. It's a foul on Dante Farrell. Spartans will have it under the Woodward basket here. 142 remaining in this third quarter of play. Goyette inside the blanks. Working around defenders, goes up, off the rim, no good. Clark fighting for the rebound, but is unsuccessful. He's fighting with Farrell. McMillan drives inside. There's a blocking foul. Brenner, the guilty party, 
Tried to draw that foul there. It was just unsuccessful. Same thing he did before, and it was called a charge. You're only going to get maybe one, maybe two of those a game. And Brenner already had his one. I don't see him getting a second unless it's actually a charge. But that's McMillan's only foul so far this game. That shot off the front iron, no good. Woodward fighting for that rebound, unsuccessful. It'll be a turnover. Yeah, foul, excuse me. Foul resulting in turnover, I guess. 116 on the clock for the third quarter. Woodward leads it 38 to 22 as Boyette stands on the baseline, ready to inbound it. Still playing a little slow on offense and defense as well. Spartans just unable to find anything, get anything going. Battling the full court pressure again. Blanks to Goyette, to Brenner for three. Off the rim, no good, rebounded by Clark. Clark's second effort, too strong, but draws a foul. Great effort there from Clark. Makes his way to the charity stripe, shooting two. That first shot from Brenner was just a little too strong there. And Clark was able to draw that foul there. Knocks down his first. Has one more. Jake Chita enters the game. For Roger Bacon, as Clark has his second, it is up in the air, and it is good. Clean shot there. Score now stands 38 to 24 within the final minute of the third quarter. McMillan double teamed, finds an open three, and it's good. Damari Hughes knocks down three. First open three the Bulldogs have made in a while. Bulldogs just able to land more shots, produce more turnovers. As Cheetah heads in for the layup and he's got the layup. Give him two. 36 seconds of counting on the clock. Doesn't, doesn't seem like Woodward's trying to hold for the last shot. Now it does. Pace kind of slowing down. Bulldogs comfortable. As McMillan tries to draw the foul, but end up being out of bounds instead. Ball along the Spartans as Goyette set to inbound as Neal makes his way in for Cheetah. Cheetah, excuse me. Looks like it may have been a bit of an acting job there by McMillan as his coach instructs him on how to properly Goyette. keep the ball in bounds. Launches it for Neal, but is unsuccessful, is stolen by the Bulldogs once again. Back on offense, 12 seconds and counting. Moreland, standing at center court. This will be the final shot of the quarter. Moreland, advances forward. One second, puts it up. It's good. What a shot for Moreland to end the quarter. At the end of three, Woodward leads it 43 to 26 over Roger Bacon. We'll be back in just a few moments for the conclusion of this game. Stay tuned. So that leaves us with the next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right? Hello and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is the year one crew from Little Long Park. We just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, you can always go to icrctv.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. That last shot there, the buzzer beater, just from inside the three-point mark, up and in. What a shot. Great effort there. 
as the Bulldogs lead by 17, their largest lead of the night. As we have eight more minutes left on the clock, I'm Ethan Herzog, joined by Adam Gehring. You're watching the OHSAA Boys Basketball Tournament here on ICRC. Thank you for spending your evening with us. Very much appreciate it. As Neil goes up way too strong. That'll be a foul, shooting one and one. Foul on Mary Hughes of Woodward sends Clark to the charity stripe, shooting two. Shooting one and one, excuse me. Clark, fairly good at free throw shooting as I just jinxed him. There's an open three, he decides not to go for it. So window quickly, quickly closed. That shot off the glass, second effort is good. Woodward tacking on to this lead. Things looking grim for the Spartans. As Cheetah sends a pass to Blanks. Thinks about the three, decides not to go for it. It's a window closed. Clark gets the pass. Contested. Goes up for two, and he's got two and the and one. What an effort once again by Adriel Clark. One of the many playmakers of this team. Shows what he's about. Goes up. Look at that distance on that jump. As I mentioned before, he's a threat in the paint. Looks like Michael Jordan soaring through the air and scoring there. Put that on a pair of shoes. His free throw good. Makes the score 45 to 29. Woodward on top. As McMillan goes up for the layup. Is unsuccessful. Clark almost has it stolen, but draws a foul. And they'll take it all the way down to the Woodrow basket. The Woodward basket. Not Wood Woodrow. That's a president's name. Woodward. Different, different name. Throw that into my brain. I should be understanding this by now. It's been like 50 minutes. <laughs> Clark, once again, visits the line. His shot up and no good. Well, batted around, offensive rebound for Clark and the Spartans. It's Brenner's open for three and it's in and out of the rim. No good, rebounded by Goyette. Inside the paint is Brenner, and he's got two. Slowly chipping away at the lead, 645, and counting remaining in the fourth quarter. Brenner now sits with four points on the night. Clark has nine. That shot from McMillan goes up and is good. He has 13 on the night. A 30 second timeout called on the floor. Timeout called on the Woodward side. So there's that last layup there. Great effort for McMillan. Truly a great prospect. Very excited to see where he ends up next year. We're following him closely. As a Bearcat fan, I hope he goes to Cincinnati, but. I don't think so. I I suspect Purdue possibly as they're fighting for the Big Ten. That game, I believe, is tom tomorrow. They play the winner of Ohio State and somebody else. I don't remember who. I looked earlier. Now I don't remember. I think that would be the top, top school for Paul McMillan, maybe Ole Miss. Who knows, maybe you'll stay local. Head to Cincinnati, Xavier. Head down about an hour and a half south to Louisville. Up to Ohio State. It's about another hour or so from here. Also might have even gotten some offers from out west from when he played in Arizona. That is true. He, Arizona? I did read he got a couple of offers from out west when he was in Arizona at that prep school. That shot is up, off the iron, and no good. Rebounded by the Spartan Central Clark. Loses the ball, and it's picked up by Bostic. There, 
That'll be a foul. Once again. Cheetah's gonna head into the lineup here for Roger Bacon. Moreland on the sideline, waiting for the inbound. McMillan trying to find out his position there on the floor. Coach Redden not too pleased with what's happening on the floor right now. That's a turnover. That may be what the Spartans need here. Not much momentum on their side. As they'll step over half court and that'll be a turnover. Had full possession of the ball there. Pretty obvious call. I say that as if I am a ref and I'm on the floor. Now blanks at the top of the key for Roger Bacon. 5.48. On the clock left in this game. Goyette trying to march his way forward, gets up to Cheetah, and rattles around the rim and goes in. Roger Bacon still down big, trying to fight their way back. McMillan off the rim, no good. But will draw the foul and will head to the line, shooting two. It's that last play. McMillan charges forward and they got a, got a blocking call there. Well, yet the guilty party. That shot is up and good. Pretty sizable lead here for Woodward. Things not looking great for Roger Bacon here late in the fourth. Second shot up off the back iron. But McMillan will get a second attempt to make a three-point play, and he'll, he'll head back to the line. Another chance for a three-point play, technically speaking. He's able, he tries to get up there, is able to draw the foul instead. He'll head to the line once again. Back-to-back -back trip for McMillan. First shot up and good. Now sits with one more shot, 529 remaining in the game. Woodward leads 49 to 33. Had to make sure that he didn't score that basket there before I committed to saying that. Now Cheetah inside the paint, tries to go for a shot. It's not strong enough as McMillan sends it over to Moreland and gets the assist off of him and also draws a foul, gets the and one. Great play there from McMillan, able to get the assist. Moreland kind of goes flying after that play. That was what drew that foul there, as that shot is up and good. Almost a 20-point lead for Woodward late in the fourth. Lengths with the ball at the top of the key. Brenner tries to get inside, is unsuccessful intended for Goyette. Picked up by Fry. It's now back in the corner, driving inside, and now back across the three-point mark. Standing towards center court. Trying to make something happen, and does not get the and one, but heads to the line shooting two. And I take back what I said about the low fouling game here. As McMillan goes up. Was able to draw that foul, just about made that and one there. This is kind of like the Super Bowl. A lot more fouls being called in the fourth quarter. That first shot is up and good. Now a 20 point lead here late in the fourth quarter for Woodward. As McMillan has 16 points on the evening with just about five minutes left to go. here in the final frame. Dribbles twice, spins the ball in his hand. It is up and it is good. 
21 point lead now. Tops their largest lead of the night with 21. Neal to Brenner, now inside the Eubanks. Dribbles up and in. Good, the layup is good. Now McMillan drives inside the back, back out. Slowing down the pace just a little bit. No need to rush here. They have a sizable lead and possession as that shot is up and short. The second effort is up and good by Fry. Once again, a 21 point lead for Woodward. As Brenner tries to go up, loses possession of the ball, just gives up on the play. Timeout called by Woodward. There's that last basket there by Fry off the second effort. Woodward's just outperformed the Spartans this game. Offensively and defensively, they forced way more turnovers here. It's a little show here is Spartan Jr. keeps going. Wow. Four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Both teams stocking it out. Woodward holds a 21 point lead. Has nine fouls on the evening. Roger Bacon has seven. Like I had mentioned before, kind of eating my words here. As it is now a pretty heavily fouled game. But that trend staying with it happening within the second and fourth quarters. First and third were fairly light on the fouls. Four minutes exactly left on the clock. As Woodward has it and will inbound from under their own basket. They'll send it in. Bostic to Moreland as Neal tries to flop it and is unsuccessful. Now there's a turnover here. It's McMillan looks towards the bench, confused, looking for an answer. It's a foul called on the play. Chance of you can't save them being heard from across the gym. Looks like McMillan had a little pushing going on before he caught that pass. Now Brenner for three. Dinks off the rim and off the glass, no good. And this is fought for. Like it'll be a foul. Foul and a turnover. Ball belongs to Woodward. A little bit of a lineup change there. Jeremiah Hughes entering the lineup for Woodward. Now McMillan streaking down the court, goes up and he's got two. The bludgeoning continues. As Eubanks goes up for a failed layup, but draws the foul. Visit the line, shooting two. Woodward making their presence known. The students are loving it. Eubanks at the line, he'll shoot two. Has to fight against this Woodward crowd spread out across all over here as Eubanks first shot is up and good. Eubanks with one more. 321 left in the final frame. Eubanks second shot is up and good. 21 point lead for Woodward. Bostic awaits. The ball 
try and inbound it over on the opposite baseline. Woodward running away with this with 319 left in this game. They're able to slow the pace or keep extending their lead kind of as a threat to alter next week. So that they're not messing around. They're ready to compete with the GCL, the former conference of Roger Bacon. As Blanks knocks down a deep three, makes it a 20 point game. Yeah, as we saw earlier, this uh, game that Alter won before this one was only by seven points. Woodward seems like they're trying to run up the score here, leaving the starters in, trying to make their presence known, as Ethan mentioned before, so that people know that they are a force to be reckoned with in this tournament. Kanye Moreland is heading to the line now, shooting one and one. Both teams are in bonus. First shot up, no good, rebounded by Goyette. Now still working against that full court pressure. The Bulldogs have not let up here. Brenner dives on the ball, tries to get it to Goyette, but it is knocked around and ends up in the arms of an awaiting Bulldog. Now Bostic with the assist to McMillan. Now with 21 points on the night. Just stuffing the stat sheet here for McMillan. McMillan, once again, a layup. It's good. Boyette looks hurt over on the other end of the court. A little slow to get up, limping off the court. There's some R. Houts chance. Rain. Ring, excuse me. That's all right. Now McMillan is out of the game. He just got subbed out, ends his night with 23 points. Insane performance from Paul McMillan. That'll look good for scouts. He received some last minute offers before the official spring signing day. Pretty stacked list of schools that he has, however. Kansas State, Ole Miss, Purdue, and that shot, that was impressive. Nearly a slam dunk. Almost, if it had a little bit more airtime there, Mills would have had it. But alas, no dunks so far tonight. 1.16 no. left on the clock here in the final frame. That's a foul send. Yeah, the only, the only dunk we saw tonight, well, we saw, I think, two. There was the one in the first quarter. There were two. I stand there were corrected. Two. That is sometimes how being an announcer goes. So, yeah. Sometimes you're wrong. You just have to admit it. Yes. Neil's first shot goes up and is no good off the back iron. Speaking of the two dunks, first one by number one, Kalesi Fry. And then again, charging in. Once again, Fry with the dunk. Some of these other Woodward players have gotten close. There are some very athletic guys on this team. And a force in the paint. Neil's second shot. Same thing. Identical to the first. Now, Woodward. Just about a buck eight left here in the fourth quarter. Ran away with this game and will play Alter on Saturday. Back here at Butler High School at 11 a.m. An odd tip for there being one game that day. But I will not question it. That three. Off the glass. No good. That would have made this gym explode. It's Neil heads up for the layup and he's got it. Spartan faithful. Still sticking around. With a 
Timeout called on the floor. Lineup changes coming, I can only assume. Woodward will move on to the regional finals against Alter. Once again, right here on Saturday at 11 a.m., bright and early. Make sure you get your coffee. Head on up to Butler. Watch some high school basketball. Some regional final action between Woodward and Alter. Certainly going to be a thrilling game. I know I'll be watching the various college games. All the deciding factors that go into the final bracket for March Madness. Very excited for that. Woodrow. I did it again. Woodrow, not Woodrow. Woodward in the paint. Up for the layup. No good off the glass. Trying once again. Off the glass, no good. Third attempt is up and good. And that is the icing on the cake. Coffin nails, if you will, for Woodward. Striscoll goes up, no good. It's a fight for the ball. And it's a jump ball, four seconds on the clock. As Woodward waves the Spartans goodbye. This ends an incredible 16-year career for head coach Brian Neal of the Spartans. 255 wins over those 16 years. A couple of state championship appearances as the final buzzer sounds. And the districts, excuse me, the regional semifinals have been claimed by the Woodward Bulldogs. McMillan, their leading scorer, with 23 points on the evening. 68 to 42 is your final score. Once again, I am Ethan Herzog, joined by my broadcast partner, Adam Gehring. And you have been watching ICRC TV. Thank you for spending your evening with us. And thank you to the producers and ICRC TV for giving us the opportunity to broadcast this evening. That is all from Butler High School. See you next time.